What's up guys, it's Ryan here and welcome to this video where we are going to be testing out the brand new Tier 92 Eldritch Crossbow. Not only is this weapon extremely expensive, but it's also extremely rare. In order to get one, you have to take on the Ambassador, the final boss of the third and most challenging elite dungeon, the Shadow Reef. Upon defeating the Ambassador in solo mode, you'll have a 1 in 55 chance of receiving one of the three pieces. Combine all three pieces and you've got yourself an Eldritch Crossbow. Now. There are already tier 92 crossbows in the game. They're dropped by Solak. So what makes the Eldritch crossbow different? That is the special attack. This crossbow will be used almost exclusively for it and its special attack is one of the most powerful specs in the entire game. It doesn't have a cooldown and it stacks with virtually everything. In this video, I hope your snorkel's on because we're about to dive right into it. We're gonna take a look at the stats, go through a number of different boss encounters and at the end of the video, I'll let you guys know if I think this weapon is worth it. The Eldritch Crossbow is a two-handed weapon, and because of this, it has the exact same damage and accuracy values as the Saren God Bow. That being said, as it is a crossbow, it is able to fire the Bacriminal Bolts, which will increase the Eldritch Crossbow's damage output compared to the Saren God Bow. This and the special attacks are the main differences between these two weapons. For the duration of this video, the crossbow is augmented with Precise 4 Equilibrium 2 as well as Aftershock 3. By far the most interesting part of this crossbow is its special attack. This special attack is called Split Soul. For 15 seconds, instead of healing the player, the Soul Split Curse damages the player's target for four times the amount of life points it would have healed. This special attack has no cooldown, requires 25% adrenaline, and stacks with the Amulet of Souls. This special attack can be used as frequently as you'd like, but as soon as you switch weapons, the effect will clear, so you have to leave the Eldritch Crossbow equipped. On top of this, because it replaces the healing you'd otherwise get with Soul Split, you need to have Soul Split on when you cast an ability to receive the bonus damage. If your overhead is anything but Soul Split, you will not receive that bonus damage. This special attack is extremely powerful with Soul Split Flicking. Soul Split Flicking is a technique where you've got your protection prayers on whenever you're receiving incoming damage, and you've got Soul Split out whenever you're dealing damage. It allows you to get the effects of both overhead simultaneously at no cost. Because the bonus damage you get is based on how Soul Split works, we should look into that. Soul Split is capped based on the amount of damage you deal, and therefore the marginal heal you get is actually greater the lower the damage you're dealing. This chart explains it pretty well. If my base hit is 2000 with the Eldritch Special, it would deal 2950 damage, meaning I'd be getting 950 bonus damage, which is a damage increase of 47.5%. At the same time, if I were to deal a base hit of 10,000 damage, I would get 1,780 bonus damage, which would be a rough increase of 17.8%. So basically, when it comes to using the special attack, you're going to get the greatest return by using abilities that hit many times and don't hit very high. So abilities that come into mind are Fragmentation Shot, Corruption Shot, and Rapid Fire. Abilities that deal extremely high damage, like Shadow Tendrils, are best not used inside of the special attack, as other abilities will give you more bonus damage. The first boss I'm going to take my talents to is Nex, and I use talents extremely liberally, as Nex is not one of the boss fights that I am most experienced in. That being said, after a couple accidental run-ins with a 7 mil death, I started to figure it out. I did about 5 hours of next solos as I really wanted to put this bow to the test. It on paper should have been the best bow in the game here and it definitely proved worthy. The fastest next solo I'd ever been able to do was a 252 in the Blightbound crossbow testing video. With this crossbow, within only an hour of attempts, I was able to get a 234, which is significantly faster, and it was full of mistakes as well. This crossbow really shines on the Zaros phase, as Zaros phase is hit cap. On the Zaros phase, any damage you deal over 2,000 will be reduced by 75%. This greatly reduces the effectiveness of the majority of your abilities. And because the bonus damage on the Eldritch special attack appears as a separate hit, it is uncapped. This allows you to take down this phase almost twice as fast as you'd be able to if you were using a different weapon. This special attack stacks with virtually everything, so you can start by using an Eldritch Special, fire off both of your bleeds, and then you can even use Deadshot. I found it could be a little bit dangerous having Soul Split up, especially if I was low on food, but if you run next, you generally don't take too many auto attacks, and I didn't die a single time on this phase, despite me just leaving Soul Split up. Although the Eldritch Special Attack is especially good on the Zara's phase, it's also incredible at any point during the kill. This is because normally you can't use an ultimate like Death Swiftness, as mobility is required to get through the different phase points. The Eldritch Special allows you to move around no problem at all, and at the Adren cost of 25%, it's actually viable to use it frequently during the fight. It's also got no cooldown, so there's no limit on how many times you can use it. As you can see, this special attack melted through the shadow phase in a matter of seconds. When it comes to blood phase, this crossbow is absolutely fantastic. In the past, your strategy would either be to use thresholds and risk it, 
or you could go for an onslaught. Onslaught requires a ton of adrenaline, which will slow down your future phases. With this crossbow, it's as easy as popping off the spec, and you'll finish the entire phase within a couple abilities. It's worth noting that bleeds will not work on blood phase, but it works out just as well, because if you finish the blood phase quickly enough, you'll be able to apply your bleeds with the bonus damage on the minion, which will get you into ice phase even quicker. This comes as no surprise, but I would absolutely recommend this weapon at Nex. It's hands down the best single weapon for Nex solos in the entire game, for a number of reasons we've already discussed. Basically, if you can get your hands on one of these things, it will greatly improve your Nex solos. Although for portions of this video I'll be using the Eldritch Crossbow with other ranged weapons like the Saren Godbow and the Blightbound Crossbows, I also wanted to focus on this weapon as a primary. If you can only get one tier 92, is this really the one you want to go for? And for that reason, I did a number of boss encounters solely camping the Eldritch Crossbow. We're going to begin with the end at Elite Dungeon 3. This crossbow is brilliant at the Crassian Leviathan. It's a boss fight where mobility is quite helpful, and not only that, but the boss does not hit very much. Because of this, it's very easy and safe to camp soul split, use the special attack, and even though you're not getting heals, you shouldn't end up getting comboed out. It's a very relaxed boss fight in that sense, and I was able to get a time of a minute and 40 seconds in my fastest run. Overall, this bow feels very well built for the Crassian Leviathan. The Saren Godbow would be terrible here, as the boss is listed as a one by one, even though he's massive, so there's really no need to use anything like that. On top of that, even when the Crassian Leviathan switches sides, he will not reset puncture stacks, so you can actually retain 10 puncture stacks for the entire boss fight. This will allow you to use Salt the Wound and get even more damage off. This boss fight isn't particularly difficult across any weapons or combat styles, but it does provide a good opportunity to take advantage of the special attack. Now, onto something a little more difficult. The well-established mark for a decent ambassador kill is if you can get through the entire boss fight while only getting one set of spinners. This means that in only two damaging rotations, you need to get the ambassador from 1 million life points to 550,000 before the second set of spinners comes out. If you can reach 550,000 life points, the boss will transition into phase two, and you will have gotten yourself a one cycle. To continue with the trend from earlier, I decided to camp the Eldritch Crossbow. Not only did I camp the bow, but I didn't want to do anything cheaty, so I also decided not to use vulnerability. When you're in a boss fight like this one, it would be very beneficial to use the Ingenuity of the Human Sigil to apply a vulnerability, which would get you 10% more damage. That being said, it felt a little excessive and I wanted to see if I could one cycle the boss without it. This more than anything else in this video is a long-term sustained DPS test camping this weapon as a primary. And I was extremely surprised to find out that I was actually able to one cycle the ambassador with ranged more effectively than I was able to do it with magic and fortic auto attacking. That isn't to say that one cycling the ambassador is extremely difficult with magic, or that range is better than magic, but in my experience, you could make a lot more mistakes and a lot more errors with ranged and still manage to hit the one cycle. Now, for the spinner portion of the boss fight, the Eldritch Crossbow special attack is absolutely fantastic. It makes clearing the spinners extremely easy, and you'll find the spinners going down a lot faster than you even expect. Now, normally at this part of the boss fight, I'm healing up to full life points with Soul Split, so to counteract the fact that you don't get healing with the Eldritch spec, I busted out the Onyx Bolts, and they worked extremely well to make up for that lost healing I otherwise would have had. When I solo the Ambassador, the goal is always to take down 5 spinners, and I don't bother with the 6th as Disruption Shield takes one click and is not a DPS loss. And as you can see, I was able to do it very easily. There were no close calls, and I didn't even need to use my Dominion Mines either. Speeding things up, I was able to get it to the phase point before the second set of spinners, securing my one cycle, which means this weapon will definitely do the trick at the Ambassador. Now, I've soloed the Ambassador 140 times. I've done at least 20 solos with each of the three combat styles, and personally, melee is my preference. Although this bow is quite fun to use, it's not my favorite thing to do here, although I would still recommend it. If range is a combat style you like to use, it's extremely functional at the Ambassador boss fight, and especially for the spinner portion of the boss fight where mobility and damage output are both required, the special attack can be very handy. Outside of the spinner phase, I personally found it very difficult to soul split flick with the special attack as the ambassador attacks relatively quickly, but if you had the perfect binds for it and you were very committed to it, you could certainly do that to speed up your kills. Since the release of Araxor, range has had a reputation for being the safest combat style to bring. You generally take less damage than using any other combat style, but it is at a cost. The cost is generally kill times, as DPS rotations, especially for speed kills, are significantly better with both melee and magic. The Eldritch Crossbow doesn't completely bridge this gap, but it makes it a lot closer. With just a Saren Godbow, the special attack is great, but because it has a cooldown, you can only use it a couple times per kill. Because of this, camping a Saren Godbow, I struggled to get kill times under 3 minutes and 30 seconds on 1-2. Which is a decent time, but it's not anywhere close to the 2.30 I'd be able to get with melee, or the 2.45 I'd be able to do with magic. 
With the Eldritch Crossbow, I found myself not even bothering to waste the adrenaline to death swiftness. I would quite simply go natural instinct into an Eldritch Crossbow special attack, and I was able to get some very competitive kill times with this strategy. As you can see here, I've Eldritch spec'd, I haven't death swifted, and I'm simply using my bleeds, offloading some thresholds, and you'll see that it's completely phased very quickly. As you can see here, at the point that I reach the entrance of the third phase, I've already finished the second phase, and that's generally what you want to do if you're going for a fast time. It works the exact same way with magic, although with magic, you would need to use the ultimate metamorphosis to accomplish this. Once I reach the third phase, I'm simply using the Eldritch Special Attack for a third time in a row. It's got no cooldown, so you may as well take advantage. And like I talked about earlier, I'm continuing to prioritize Rapid Fire as well as my bleeds. Once I knew it was safe at the minion spawn, I threw down a Saren Godbow spec, I took care of the Pulsing Spider, and then I Eldritch Crossbow Special Attacked for the fourth time. If you turn your attention to my Quiver slot, you'll notice that I'm not using Ruby Becriminal Bolts. I'm actually using Hydrix Becriminal Bolts for the special attack that gives me increased adrenaline gain. You'll see that once I've Eldritch spec for the fourth time, Araxor's life points completely drop. Simply going Rapid Fire into a Tendril's pretty well finished off the entire phase. On abilities like Rapid Fire, it's that powerful. Now, phase four, you have some time before the boss is attackable, and because of this, I elected to use Death Swiftness. Just because the Eldritch Crossbow has a good special attack does not mean it'll outclass Death Swiftness in instances like these. I drop my Death Swiftness, and I'm building as quickly as I can. As soon as the boss is attackable, I'm gonna offload some quick thresholds without an Eldritch spec, and you're gonna see that I'm able to get the boss to 50k life points extremely quickly without getting another minion spawn. This is something you can do with pretty much any range weapon. You could do it with an Eldritch Crossbow, a Saren Godbow, Blightbounds, Ascensions, or anything in between. As soon as the boss reached 40,000 life points, I threw one final Saren Godbow spec to finish off the kill. Now, although the Saren Godbow specs look extremely flashy, if I had to pick one of the two weapons for Araxor, I would actually take the Eldritch Bow. It gives you an alternative to Death Swiftness that is mobile and stacks with bleeds, similar to what Metamorphosis gives you with magic. And that to me is a lot more widely useful than the Saren Godbow special attack that is only especially good on the Araxi part of the boss fight. With that being said, these two weapons complement each other very well. You'd be using the Eldritch Crossbow for the majority of the boss fight to get into phase four, and then once phase four began, you'd be able to pop off a Saren Godbow special for a good 30 to 40,000 free damage. I did several kills just camping the Saren Godbow versus just camping the Eldritch Bow, and the kill times were quite a bit better just camping the Eldritch Bow, so it gets my recommendation there. Still, while using Ranger to Raxor, I was not able to get times in the same ballpark as I'd otherwise be able to get with melee, so although this bow is a game changer within the combat style, in my opinion, it does not change the meta at this boss. Pardon my face, this happened during a stream and was not meant to be a part of this video, but it illustrates really well what I mean about this bow and how it changes the Araxor fight. Generally, when you're going down mid path, you've got two sections where you need to output good DPS. You need to finish off phase three quickly, and then also phase four, which is immediately after. You would not be able to death swiftness on both of these phases as it would be on cooldown. As you can see, the Eldritch Special Attack allowed me to very effectively clear the entirety of Phase 3, which saved my Death Swiftness for the Phase 4. Because of this, I was able to Death Swiftness on P4 and get a 3 minute and 30 second kill, which is extremely competitive to other combat styles and very solid for mid path. Now we're going to take things to Telos. Telos is a perfect example of a boss where this special attack really doesn't shine. Even if you've got perfect soul split flicks, it's an okay way to speed up your kills, but you're still going to want to switch weapons. In my testing, Telos simply has too many mechanics to take advantage of a special attack that requires you to keep it equipped for the full 15 seconds unless you want to lose out on the benefits. And on top of this, both on the first and the fifth phases, you've got a beam that gives you adrenaline. Because of this infinite adrenaline situation, Death Swiftness is going to greatly outclass the Eldritch Crossbow special attack. And that's before even remembering that the Eldritch special attack only works if you have soul split up. Overall, I didn't hate my time at Telos with this thing, but it certainly didn't shine, and if you told me I had to go and range 100 Telos skills, I would much prefer to take a Saren Godbow over this thing. At the Temple of Amanishi, there are a lot of really good applications in the boss fights for the Eldritch Crossbow in particular. A good example is the Sanctum Guardian, the first boss. Whether you're in a Death Swiftness or you're not, there's a portion of the boss fight where the boss is spinning around and you are not being attacked at all. This gives you a great, easy opportunity to bust out that special attack and increase your damage output. At the same time, if you are to do this, you won't be able to switch weapons, so you won't be able to use something like a flanking switch that also works when the boss is facing the opposite direction. So remember, when you're seeing all of this extra bonus damage, it does come at a cost. Within that 15 second Eldritch Crossbow special attack, I was able to output over 90,000 damage. This crossbow is no slouch. So this is a really good Eldritch, Eldritch Crossbow spec point. As you can probably imagine, I'm hitting like a boss move! Oh! 
During the Masuda spinning phase, you've got another great opportunity to take advantage of the Eldritch special attack. Nothing's attacking you so long as you can stay away, and I found this was a very good alternative to using something like Death Swiftness that would root me in place and likely result in me taking some damage. At Seryu, it's a similar story. Up on top of the crystals where you're not taking any damage at all, the Eldritch Crossbow is a really good way to both guarantee you get the first crystal down in time, but also put out some really good damage on the second crystal before dropping back down. The fact that this thing doesn't have a cooldown once again comes in handy here, as you could Death Swiftness the first crystal, Eldritch spec the second one, and then as soon as you get back down, you could use the Eldritch Crossbow spec special attack on the boss. I had no issues using the special attack down below when I'm fighting the boss as Seryu does not attack very frequently and on top of that I was able to utilize disruption shield in order to block the fire breath attack. I found on average for a 15 second special attack I would have to flick to my mage prayer maybe three times so really not a big deal, not super click intensive and it was a good way to speed up my kills, especially when Seryu is throwing a lot of shadow hands where a death swiftness may not be the most accessible thing at all times. I wouldn't call it a must-have, but if you're going to be using the ranged combat style at the Temple of Amanishi, the Eldritch Crossbow is extremely powerful. The most interesting use for the Eldritch Crossbow, in my opinion, is in the Elite Dungeons, not for the bosses, but for clearing the mobs. Especially in the second Elite Dungeon, there are a lot of instances where the monsters you're fighting are fairly spread out and Chinchampas will not work. On top of this, there aren't enough enemies to merit using an ultimate like Death Swiftness. This creates a perfect storm scenario for the Eldritch Crossbow to be useful. You can use the special attack as often as you'd like to clear away the dragons a little bit faster, and it does make a significant difference. The Eldritch Crossbow special attack combined with mechanized chinchampas is without a doubt the fastest way to clear groups of mobs within the elite dungeons. Hands down. Astalorn's a really fun boss because you get a damage modifier for standing inside the white area. On top of this, you can stack vulnerability, the Dragon Slayer Sigil, and the Dragon Slayer perk to deal mass damage. Inside of this single rapid fire, I was able to output 50,000 damage, and using this special attack in this way led to me getting my personal record of 55 seconds. Once set up, this boss fight isn't particularly difficult, so this isn't a must-have or anything, but it complemented the Saren Godbo very well and allowed me to get a personal record, so I thought I'd add it. The Blackstone Dragon has a section of the boss fight where the hands are firing at you. First off, as a note, the tile I'm standing on right now is a safe spot, there are four of them, and if you stand there, the shadows will pass directly through you, so you don't need to worry about moving. You can drop a Death Swiftness, and if it's on cooldown, you can use the Eldritch Crossbow Special Attack to speed up this part of the boss fight. It works out really well here, and for the third time in three Elite Dungeons, there's a section in the final boss that is very friendly towards the Eldritch Crossbow Special Attack. Throughout my testing Blackstone Dragon kills, I also tried to use the Eldritch Special Attack in my regular Death Swiftness rotation, and I didn't find this to be significantly better than simply going through a Death Swiftness. This is because, as we discussed earlier, the more damage you're dealing per hit, the less extra damage you'll be getting out of the Eldritch Crossbow Special Attack. Because of this, in my opinion, it's better to use the Eldritch Crossbow Special Attack when Death Swiftness is on cooldown in a boss fight. It kind of fills the same area as the Zaros Godsword Special Attack would when your Berserk is on cooldown. But that's just in my experience, and that's just what I found throughout my testing. The truth is, it's hard to quantify exactly how good the Eldritch Special Attack is, because currently the Blight bonus damage does not count on a DPS gem. DPS gems are normally used to track how much damage someone's able to output in 5 minutes, and currently any bonus damage you get during that Special Attack will not count. Hopefully they patch it soon so that we'll be able to get to work on some really crazy rotations. I also spent a couple hours at Solak. Overall, the Eldritch Crossbow Special has a lot of pretty decent applications. I found I was able to pull off some really interesting combos with Natural Instinct and the Hydrix per Criminal Bolts on the final phase, where I was able to put an Eldritch Crossbow Special Attack inside of a Death Swiftness. Seeing bonus damage on top of a 25,000 damage shatter is something that you don't get to see every day, and the kills were extremely consistent. So consistent, in fact, that of the 8 kills I did, every single final phase finished within 2 seconds of one another. So this clip was practically identical to all the other final phases I had. I can't say it's faster than my kills when I'm melee camping or when I'm hybriding, but it absolutely got the job done and it was a serviceable way to get through this phase very consistently. But this crossbow wasn't only good for the final phase. Let's go back to the earlier parts in the kill. My duo partner and I were able to output extremely good damage on the core. I had a great opportunity to death swiftness on the legs, build up to full adrenaline, and then starting from full adrenaline when the core spawned, I was able to eldritch spec and then go through a rotation that was almost exclusively threshold. Getting the core to 45,000 life points is ridiculously good, especially considering I'm camping ranged. Unless you're specifically going for one cycle kills, this will more than do the trick, as getting the core to anything under 100,000 life points will get you through in two cycles. I also found the special attack very handy for the arms and the legs. You're not taking any damage, there's no cooldown on it, so you may as well. 
It's not needed, but it makes it quite a bit easier, and if you're someone who has failed the arms or the legs before, this special attack could make sure that it never happens again. I also used the Eldritch Crossbow special attack during the climb, and it worked out quite nicely. You're gonna notice the majority of these points where I've used the Eldritch Special Attack, it's being used in points where if you were hybriding, you'd be using an ultimate ability with a different combat style. Especially in Seven Men Solak, a lot of people prefer to hybrid as you don't really take very much damage, you don't need the food, and it allows you to rotate ultimate abilities across two combat styles. The most popular method of hybriding Solak is rotating between Sunshine and Berserk repeatedly for the majority of the kill. If you are planning on hybriding at Solak, even if you're planning on using ranged, the Eldritch Crossbow becomes a lot less useful, as instead of using an Eldritch Special Attack, you'd either be building Adrenaline, or you'd be working towards getting to an ultimate with the other combat style. I've done a lot of Solak hybriding, and I've also done a lot of Solak camping one single combat style, and camping one combat style is by far my preference. It's a little more casual, it's a little easier, and the kills are still relatively consistent, so for me, this bow is a really good option. That being said, if you're trying to get the best kill speeds and you're trying to go on the best teams, you will most likely be expected to hybrid, and I would not recommend showing up with one of these things and expecting to compete with people who are hybriding both combat styles. Now it's time for some quickies. These bosses didn't deserve their own full-on review, but I thought I'd cover them quickly here. This is the best weapon you could bring to Lejos, because if you're doing them correctly, you should not be taking any damage at all, so you can actually leave Soul Split up and you will not get hit. That being said, if you're learning Lejos, you could end up making a mistake, and you'll get pretty much one hit without Mage Prey on, so definitely be careful, and it's more for advanced users only. Because it doesn't have a cooldown, you can literally do this every single kill, and it'll make sure all of your kills are quick. The problem with this special attack at the Magister is, the first kill of any trip at the Magister is going to be extremely slow, as you'll be starting off at 0% Corruption. Corruption increases your damage dealt and taken, and generally in a long Magister trip, having a high Corruption percentage between kills, as well as a Soul Split curse, allows you to virtually use no food. You can pretty well bring an entire invent of Keys to the Crossing, and you won't have to bank until you run out of keys. Using this crossbow comes at the cost of food. You will be taking increased damage as you won't be getting those heals. Because of this, you're going to have to bank more frequently and it's going to result in fewer kills per hour. So overall, I'd absolutely be willing to give it a miss at this boss, although I was able to get a 40 second kill, which is relatively passable. Now let's go to raids. Overall, I found the Eldritch Crossbow a good crossbow to use, but the special attack was not particularly great. The abilities that are boosted most by the special attack are your bleeds, and if you're in a group encounter with anybody else using ranged, and they use a bleed after you, their bleed will actually cancel yours. So unless you're the only ranger or you're willing to coordinate your bleeds with the other person, this special attack can be a bit of a waste of time. When you're a ranger at Yakamaru, you're generally going to be responsible for tagging all the jellyfish, and that's a really good point to get a free resonance from the pool. You will not be able to do this if you're using a special attack that does not allow you to switch to a shield. On top of this, a flanking switch is big damage and you'll be missing out on that, and the Saren Godbo special attack is also extremely powerful at Yakamaru in particular, so you'd be a lot better off using Death Swiftness and using the Saren Godbo special as often as possible with your other switches. If you don't really subscribe to the whole switchscape thing, the Eldritch Crossbow would be an okay option, but it would still be outclassed by other ranged weapons. Phase 5 Virago is listed as 5x5, five five, so the Saren Godbo special attack is absolutely ridiculous. In addition to this, in a Rago duo, adrenaline building is absolutely critical. And because the Eldritch Crossbow special does not outweigh Death Swiftness, I found it was better to go through a Death Swiftness rotation and use that extra adrenaline I had on a Saren Godbo special attack instead of the Eldritch Crossbow. It's not that the Eldritch Crossbow special isn't good on Phase 5, it's just not nearly as good as a Saren Godbow. The other factor that comes into play is generally I'd be placing both my bleeds on the boss, coming out of the team split as the bomb tank right before using Barricade. Because of this, you wouldn't have enough time to get back up to 100% adrenaline to barricade if you were going to Eldritch spec before your bleeds. On Team Split Week, there's a short DPS window right before the first Reflect, and it gives you a really good opportunity to get off an Eldritch special, use your thresholds, and you'll still have enough time during the Reflect to build all the way back up to full adrenaline before the DPS part of the phase. Overall, I'm not going to recommend purchasing this bow for Virago. It was alright, it was pretty good, but especially if you're getting into duos or small team Virago, a lot of switches are required, and the Eldritch Crossbow is not very well suited to that, especially from a special attack standpoint. If it is the weapon that you have, you'll be able to get very good, easy, consistent duos with it, but they wouldn't be the best possible duos you'd be able to get if your budget is well over a billion coins. Now is that time where I tell you guys if I think this weapon is worth it. I would personally rank the Eldritch Crossbow over the Saren Godbow. I know that's going to be seen as controversial, and personally, I think the Eldritch Crossbow has more overall applications. At the same time, you need to look at which bosses and which activities you plan on doing. If the majority of the creatures you'll be fighting are larger where you can take advantage of the Saren Godbow spec, it's very possible that that will be the better weapon option for you. For me, I much prefer this. 
The Sarin Godbo is absolutely ridiculous in certain places, but at a lot of other spots, the special attack is not extremely useful and it's pretty well used as a spec switch. This Eldritch Crossbow is something that you can camp and the special attack is something you can pop off as often as you'd like on any target. In addition, if I had 1.5 billion coins to spend right now on ranged weapons, I would much prefer Ascension Crossbows and an Eldritch Crossbow over Blightbounds and something like a Noxbow. This weapon is diverse, it's powerful, and it has intriguing and meaningful uses. It's a fantastic weapon to add to your arsenal, and in my opinion, it fills an extremely important gap with the ranged combat style. And that's all I've got for you guys. I hope you all enjoyed the video, and if there was anything you did like or did not like, feel free to put it in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, you might like some of my other work and you can check it out on screen. Also consider subscribing to my channel. Over 70% of the people watching this video are not subscribed to the channel, and in a single click, you could be, if you want to.